Hello. Uh, hello, Oliver. Hi. Thank you very much for this interview. It's a very, go very big honor for my little channel and my vlog. I love it already. Um, I'm very interested in uh, asking you some questions because, in my opinion, you're the missing link be uh, between the classical uh, spectrum of music and, of course, we have a very rich background as a classical cellist. Mm. Um, and uh, the contemporary music, the, the, the contemporary scene, yeah. Um, so you connect it magically these two, two uh, worlds, two spectrums. And um, how did you decide to, to, to marry these elements, very inter interesting elements? Hmm. Yeah. I think my first realization was that uh, that I didn't know what classical music was because it, everyone seemed to have a different definition for classical music like it could mean all kinds of things from uh, John Cage um, yes. uh, e experimental scores all the way to like a Mozart symphony or a piece of medieval plain chant so but for everyone I realized that classical music was t was an industry with its own like uh, ideas and values about image and selling, selling products, wow. as opposed to a type of music. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I no longer knew, I mean, I knew that it involves notation and it involves training, but... Um, serious training. Yeah, it involves serious training. I think, I've, I've, I guess I've always just not thought about anything except the music that I was working on at that time. So I, I, um, if you have a large circle, which is sort of music, classical music has this habit of putting itself in that circle with a with a a ring around it to sort of protect itself, which is which is right because it, it needs to be protected from extinction. But at the same time, in doing so, you can make it um, seem like it's knowledge based that you need to know. You know, people often have this. People outside of that circle who love music might say, I think you need to know stuff in order to enjoy this. And, and that's part of, you know, if you have like classical music specialism, classical music journalists, classical music reviewers, they act like, you know, because Beethoven's Symphony was written in this year, that has an impact on the way you feel about listening to it now. It doesn't. It, it doesn't have to. It's mm -hmm. one way of thinking about it. It's one. It's one narrative. It's one. It's one way in. It could also just be the phenomenological way in. You could just be impressed by the sounds yes, okay. flying around the room, or it could bore you, and that's that's a legitimate response. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't it doesn't do anything for you. And I realised that classical music is not indefensible. It is not like you can't argue that it's better. Oh, okay. And as soon as you do that. If, as soon as you, you use, if, if, as soon as you use in, intellect and mm -hmm. an analysis to argue that some that somebody else is wrong if they don't like something, that's about power control. That's how you manipulate people by saying, mm -hmm. "Well, you just don't understand, or you're wrong." So on that basis, um, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a strong believer in opening it up and people sort of. Um, <sighs> I think I also can, canon forming has a big part of it. Like uh, the, can, the, the formation of the canons is quite intimidating uh, for people. Um, the feeling of genius, the idea of genius, and the idea of imposing geniuses from the past who you ought to love. You know, like my dad always said, it doesn't matter if you love one page from a book. All that matters is your relationship with that one page. You don't have to read the whole thing. It's great if you do love the whole thing and you have the patience to see it through. But even if you loved one small, tiny poem um, or one line from a book and it, and it changed you the way or, or it gave you a new perspective on your emotional life, that's good enough. And so if you found a minute of Bach very spiritual and moving alongside a, um, something that was made in a commercial setting or, or like 
there are no, there's no high and low for me about how music can impact your emotions. I love mm -hmm. Enya mm -hmm. as much as I love Bach. I don't, f I don't put, I no longer put Bach, Bach, Bach on a pedestal. I do. I can understand that. I do think he was an extraordinary composer and craftsman, and he wrote cantatas every week and mm -hmm. had unbelievable numbers of children and had this crazy <laughs> life. But I can, pu I can put him to one side for a few years. I, could, I don't have to keep playing the Bach suites for a decade. I can put them aside for a decade, and then maybe I'll come back and find something new in them. But I don't want to be told continually that really I ought to be returning to the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can notice that um, given the, all this um, very interesting uh, pattern you created for us in order to understand how you compose and you put yourself in the musical spectrum, uh, you decided to, or maybe, or you liked, or this was what it, you were attracted to, uh, a very rhythmical and very primitive, yeah. you, somebody, somebody would say, elements of uh, the other spectrum of music. Of, uh, yeah. Beats and uh, simple melodies. Yes. Uh, and this is very genuine and uh, well, prototype I, for me. For me, it's. Uh, I mean, I used to play, you know, Schoenberg chamber symphonies and and things like that. And and I, I guess the simplification of well, I'm writing much more now, and I'm writing much more film music. And I think when you're writing. You, people might say that if you took something that was incredibly simple that you were dealing with, um, it's like having a conversation, even a cliche, a cliche in music, a D minor arpeggio or something, it's a way of having a conversation with someone. And uh, the, the idea of mod, uh, modern composition is I need to find something new. You don't need to find something new, you need to find something new to say, and it doesn't matter what materials you use. So the materials you use could be very, commonplace and even if you use a cliche uh, it's okay but it depends what you do with that cliche and what mm -hmm. what kind of emotional conversation you're having mm -hmm. so I yeah I like primitive I like primitive melodies I guess I like folk music a lot and I like stripping away some of the heaviness of interpretation I think that's one thing that I learned when I when I let go of um, teaching was that the the idea of voices in your head about how to play the cello you know mm -hmm. you, you, the, the primary influences on your life the, some yes. great cellists have been prime big influences on my life but letting go of them um, so that i could make a selection about a sound choose this harmonic or choose this fingering because it takes me back to when i was 14, 15 years old and falling in love with music, the, the innocent emotion, mm -hmm. and not to feel that I shouldn't make that colour or, I sh or, or yes. that I would, be, I would be wrong. The first impression with things, the first... Uh... Yeah, the first love, getting, yes. going back to pre-college, yes, going yes, back yes. to the, the, the beginnings of where you fell in love with music, the basics, and, mm -hmm. and if I like a colour and then another teacher came along and, and, told, and, and sort of beat it out of me, you really shouldn't be playing that sound, or you really need to vibrate every note, or you really need to not um, change string in the middle of a contour of a melody because it breaks the colour. These ideas were, are good ideas, but they were imposed as, as a sort of, as a rubric that I learned. And then you, I have that, and then you can let go of that and just be more innocent and impulsive about how you make sounds. So that was one thing, was letting go. Also the heavy weight of interpretation, you know, like all of the ideas piled on top of how to play a simple melody of Beethoven. You know, you might have a very simple A major melody, but I remember just sort of years and years and years of people talking about it, how yes. to, the bowings, the phrasings, and it's just this weight of pressure on the on the on on it when if you're just a kid or you're just an, a person who who wants to just listen to a lovely melody um you, yes. classical music has this habit of saturating and over analyzing that uh, so mm -hmm. but i'm not criticizing it i'm just i think you yes. should i think it just needs to be aware of this and to free itself up to apply the craft to all kinds of situations and contexts uh, wait a minute Okay, everything is okay here. So, yeah. uh, Oliver, today we are in Athens. Yes. We are in Athens. Uh, UK, is it first here, first time in here in uh, Greece, or I think you have uh, contributed to, to Documenta? Yeah, I played. I, I played on a rooftop in Documenta a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, uh, just an improvisation thing 
which was really good fun mm -hmm. with a couple of friends. And, and I've been here before, but not much. Um, okay, so, so how did this collaboration with uh, Dior and this uh, very interesting uh, you know, show? Because, it's, as you know, it's um, two hundreds from the Greek Revolution. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, and this uh, show from Dior is connected with the Greek tradition and uh, all this. Uh... I have a friend called Arka and she was approached to have her music performed as part of this show. So she approached me to play the melodies of her music and orchestrate them. I think they, Dior wanted to have Arka's music in the show. It came slowly together over a couple of months of conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, and even today, <laughs> at the last minute, we're making changes. We're working yes. with Joanna Ge Geeker yes. as well, and she's singing a few songs. And I'm playing one of my tracks. And yeah, it's. It's been in collaboration with Dior and the music supervisor, and it's just come together really nicely. Um, how do you find the collaboration with the Greek musicians? I love them. They're so <laughs> good spirited and okay. patient, and they make such a beautiful sound. And everyone is very open and enthusiastic, and it's perfect for a fashion show. I have to say to my audience that uh, Oliver is a, a very high regarded cellist. I think that you extracted the higher ever rank graduate as a graduate uh -huh. from Royal I Academy. Might have done. Yes, I have done that. This is extraordinary. Um, uh, I don't want to keep you more because I know you have to we uh, could do give a show. rest. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much for this oh, uh, interview. It's such a pleasure. It's nice to talk to you and properly. Uh, Not in a rehearsal when I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I'm happy to see you again in Greece. Thank you. Yeah, I'd love to again. come back. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks.